Are you wondering if your little one has a tongue tie? This seems to be a very hot topic and it can be pretty confusing to figure out. Sometimes we're being told our little one has a tongue tie, doesn't have a tongue tie, or has a little tongue tie. I'm gonna tell you right now, there's no such thing as a little bit of a tongue tie. Hi, welcome beautiful families. I'm Nalini, I am a nursing mom, I'm pregnant, and a lactation consultant. Over the years, I have worked with many families and various other professionals in the world of tongue ties. In my own breastfeeding journey, I've had to swim through the murky waters of tongue ties. And to me, it felt like going through an upstream battle at many points where I was by myself or had to just decode a mystery on my own. This is a huge topic and to keep things less confusing, I'm going to break up the knowledge bomb with multiple videos. If you're new here or have not yet subscribed, go ahead and click that bell icon and subscribe in order to get free lactation videos when you may need it most. So let's go through this together, shall we? Number one, common signs of a tongue tie. One of the more common signs of a tongue tie is when a baby is clicking, as they are nursing or feeding. <coughs> kind of sounds like that. Not always, but kind of sounds like that. When suckling, a baby's tongue should be suctioned to something. So when nursing, the clicking typically happens when a seal is broken between the tongue and the nipple. Clicking can often be heard still with bottle feeding too, and while sucking on a pacifier. It's easier to assess when allowing baby to suck on a finger, and then we'll notice that the tongue starts to click when the jaw moves down and away from its target, or the finger. Since we can hear the clicking with nursing, sucking a pacifier, bottle, or even on a finger, it's important to note that it's not exclusively to breastfeeding and nursing directly from the body. It is more noticeable with breastfeeding because of the pain associated and the discomfort that may be associated with breastfeeding. With that being said, if breastfeeding is affected by a tongue tie, here are also a few things that may be noticed directly at the breast. A shallow latch. This is where your little one may not have a ton of breast tissue in their mouth and primarily be sucking on the nipple. As mentioned, the clicking sounds. So the clicking sounds come in when suction is being lost in the mouth because the tongue cannot lift all the way up. Mom may feel nipple pain and see that the nipple changes shape when it comes out of baby's mouth. Last but not least, there may be low milk supply. Mom may also experience clogs, possibly even mastitis because milk is not being removed efficiently or appropriately. There are many other symptoms that can result from a tongue tie that aren't directly felt or seen at the breast, but here are a few that should be noted. Slow, poor weight gain is a term that we may hear from our pediatrician or other caregivers. Having an open mouth while breathing, extra gassiness, fussiness, reflux, these are all things that can be caused by not being able to suck appropriately. When we talk about breastfeeding and the latch, we often hear that babies need to open their mouth super wide. And when they open their mouth super wide, then they latch on to the breast, not just the nipple, but parts of the areola or take in as much breast tissue as they can with that open mouth. Once latched onto the breast, the seal that is initially made, you can't actually see because it's made by your little one using the middle of their tongue to push up against your breast tissue and their palate. Once that initial seal is made, then their jaw relaxes, goes back down, but the tongue stays up. That increase in space in the mouth actually creates a vacuum, which helps to suck the milk out of your breast. It's very similar to breathing where your diaphragm has to go down in order to create more space in the chest cavity so you can take a deep breath. When the jaw goes down, the tongue has to stay up in order to maintain that seal. If it does not, anything that prevents the tongue from staying up will basically allow for that click to occur and for that seal to break. So just a quick recap, the tongue has to stay up even when the jaw comes down. If there is a restriction, the tongue will come down 
with the jaw because there is tension, there's tightness, and something basically pulling the tongue down. The tongue coming down with the jaw is not normal. Tongue staying up when the jaw comes down, that is normal. Now that we know what normal is, what is a tongue tie and what does it look like? Take a moment to hit that like button if what you've heard so far is helpful to you or someone else that you may know. The medical term for a tongue tie is ankyloglossia. This is where there is a restriction under the tongue that actively inhibits the tongue from appropriately functioning. And now we know what appropriate and normal function is. There are different levels or classes and types of tongue ties. Classes tell us the severity of the tongue tie, whereas a type will tell us more about or describe the tongue tie itself. I'm gonna go over four classes and four types quickly. Don't get hung up on the classes or the types. Depending on the provider that you speak to, whether it's a pediatric dentist or a pediatrician, they may interchange the classes and types, which can be really confusing, and it may go in a different order. Yeah, it doesn't help it at all when it comes to the confusion, but let's go over some of the stuff here. Classes tell us the severity of the tongue tie. So what we're looking at here is class one says mild ankyloglossia, meaning the tongue can move quite a lot. So not more than 16 millimeters from the base of the mouth upward, but between 12 and 16. Whereas class four is less than three millimeters. So basically this little one is not able to lift their tongue very far from the bottom of their mouth at all. When it comes to the type of tongue tie, there are anterior ties, posterior ties, mid ties, and many times, an anterior or a tie that's attached to the front of the tongue will often come with a tie or restriction that goes all the way back, so the posterior part of the tongue. Type one, we can see here that it is attached to the very, very tippy tip of the tongue. Type two does not include the very tippy tip of the tongue and it goes back a little bit. Sometimes it's called midline, but it creates a cupping of the tongue when the little one tries to lift their tongue. In type three, it's distal to the midline, meaning behind the middle of the tongue. Sometimes this can appear normal. And with type four, it's so far back, it may not even be noticeable unless it's being pushed on, meaning someone's fingers are under the tongue and actively looking for a restriction. I wanna note here that type one and two are the ones that are most recognizable, and types three and four are typically brushed off by many professionals. When it comes to type three, this is where a professional, if it's being brushed off or they're unsure, unskilled in the area, they may look and say, you know what, there is some tightness there. It may go away on its own. Your kid has a partial tie. There is no such thing as a partial tie. You either have a tongue tie that needs to be released and fixed with a procedure, or there's no actual tie, there's an oral restriction, which is another video. Knowing the foundations will help you have a better understanding of what to listen for, what questions to ask when you're talking to a pediatrician or a pediatric dentist, or even a lactation consultant. Because personal story here, I have known about a oral restriction, tongue tie specifically, and a lip tie in my little one's mouth, went to the pediatrician, asked for an oral exam, had three people look into my baby's mouth and tell me, nope, she's fine. And there was clicking, poor weight gain, and all the things that they were talking about. However, they still denied any sort of tongue tie. And the worst part is, instead of saying they didn't know and refer me to a pediatric dentist, they just continued to deny, deny, deny without hearing my concerns and addressing my concerns. Many times families are told that there is no tongue tie simply because it's not visually obvious. The thing is, we have to consider all of the things here, especially when mom is breastfeeding. There's pain, there's clicking, there's weight gain issues, there's gassiness, the colic, and you know what? 
all of these issues, concerns that families have need to be taken into consideration. While this video doesn't cover everything when it comes to oral function or dysfunction, aside from tongue ties, there are also upper lip ties, lower lip ties, buccal ties or buccal ties, also known as cheek ties. And then the part that makes things controversial and confusion, confusing, oral restrictions that are not ties. Seeking help from a professional that has a broad spectrum view of oral ties, restrictions, and oral function can really help understand, can help you understand what you may be dealing with, what steps you need to take. And it can help to mitigate whether things are being overdiagnosed or even underdiagnosed. Every breastfeeding journey is different, whether this is your first one, your second, your, or your fifth, or you've heard many stories. Having to deal with oral ties, navigating just oral function with your little one can bring next level complexity that just adds a level of stress and anxiety and frustration that you don't have to deal with on your own. I help families reach their Milky's goals by providing them the tools, necessary one-on-one -on -one support through the breastfeeding success system that is linked below. Part of the controversy has to do with the overdiagnosis and treatment of tongue ties. And the thing is, real talk, we live in a society of convenience and quickness. So therefore, many times with breastfeeding, if it's not what we expected, if there's pain, if we're not getting the guidance that we really are looking for, then sometimes families are led to believe that with the procedure, all of the issues go away, which is not true at all. A tongue tie release, also known as a phrenotomy, is only part of the solution. Remember, mamas, if you are struggling and you're thinking that your little one has a tongue tie, tongue ties are only part of the puzzle. There are many other pieces, and I encourage you to be informed so that way you can make the best decision for your little one as well as your heart and your mind. Many mamas with tongue-tied babies breastfeed successfully with the right support. If you find yourself wondering whether or not your little one still has a tongue tie or maybe an oral restriction, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already because we are going to go over oral restrictions that are not ties. Thanks for joining me today. My wish for you is a happy, healthy breastfeeding journey for you and your little one.